Guys, if you don't own a Gavix, you should buy five. That's right. Why don't you own a Gavix yet? Have you even heard of Gavix? Definitely not. You call yourself a watch enthusiast? <laughs> and you don't know what Gavix is? I have no idea what Gavix is. Hi guys, I'm Patrick. I'm Adam. And welcome to... Properly Wound. Where we offer you a consumer's opinion on everything watch related. And today, we're offering you our opinion on... A watch brand you may have never heard of before. Gavix. Gavix. That would've been a good thumbnail. Yeah. That's Anyways, cool. guys, they, look at this box, by the way. It's like cool. A, it's like an old hot rod or something, or an old uh, racing car where they like strap down the hoods with leather, oh, yeah. le little leather bits. I love that. Um, the box is great. This looks like something that you would have done in high school in like woodworking <laughs> class. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like they just take old woodworking class projects and convert them into Gavix boxes. Straight out of Belgium. Straight out of Belgium. Does it say that? No. Belgian design, dude! Oh yeah, it does. There you go. Wristwatch waterproof. So today we are reviewing the Gavix Squadron. Mm. A watch that I picked up a little while ago. Yeah, it lives uh, up to that name for sure. Found out about this company... I was... I don't even know how, honestly. Don't, don't remember. I was just... I was looking at a bunch of Zins and I wanted a, uh, what was it, 556 is the one that sort of looks like this? Yeah. Or, I can't remember. It was, was either the Nomos or the Gathers. There's one, yeah. <laughs> there was a, uh, there was a brand, or Sin has some model that looks very much like this, and then I found this, which is the Quartz version. We'll find the model, and then we'll put an image up. The so Sin? Guys, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll find, yeah, yeah, I just can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, straight out of Belgium. This actually is a Belgian watch. Uh, I guess I'll sort of preface like our sort of review on this by saying that this watch was actually created for the Belgian Air Force. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sort of hogging this. I haven't really taken this watch in yet, so. 65 of these were given to the Belgian Air Force, and then 500 civilian models were uh, created up for grabs. Are you saying this is limited? I got one. Yeah, out of 500. This one's number 210. I'll go ahead and show you guys that really quickly on the case back. Guys, this is an exclusive here. Have yeah. you seen it? Gavix review? Send us a link. I want to. I want to know. It says Belgian design. Warner yeah, Wound did a uh, a uh, a blog post on this. No one watches their stuff. <laughs> Are you kidding? Even, they don't even have a channel. I don't think. No, Anyways, Warner, Warner Wound. Number two ten. Yeah, two ten yeah, out of five hundred. I watch Warner Wound. Oh, you do? They have a show. I don't think they have a cha channel. We sound like such. Anyways. Um. Yeah, anyway, so this is number 210 out of 500. The really cool thing about the case back, um, other than all the random that stuff radial, that uh, everything finish, happens. Finished with the brushing. Uh, it says it's limited edition there. But the really cool thing here is it has a Fahrenheit to Celsius converter. Yeah. So you can see that, that ring that goes all the way around the outer edge of the uh, case back. You can see... Yeah, the I'm just going to focus that close. Yeah, there we go. That, that's the ring he's speaking of. So in 70 case you degrees, don't know, 80 degrees, yeah. right into Celsius. So I don't know why you would ever need that, but that is pretty damn cool because sometimes when people, my Canadian friends, talk about the weather, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're Let talking about. Let me just about. check my, uh, check my Gavix really quick. <laughs> yeah, instead of letting me check my, my How Google. Much Celsius is it again? <laughs> uh, so it's pretty cool. And like I said, limited to 500, which is pretty cool too. They also have a PVD black version. Is that um, strap uh, original with a piece? No, it's so it came, it came just with this oyster bracelet that I have left completely untouched. It's still wrapped in the uh, in the plastic. This Ooh. is for sale, guys, by the way, if you're interested. Okay. Um, I am selling this, which is why the oyster bracelet is still... The oyster bracelet is actually pretty nice. It has solid end leaks, too. Mm. Fit right up against the... Uh, up against the... Um, the case. And what's kind of cool too is the This actual... is the perfect strap for this watch, by the yeah, way. A lot really of old military gray? watches you use this sort of blue-gray yeah. uh, strap on it. Um, so this is sort of a first impression for me, and this is obviously a review, uh, a full-on review from Adam's part, but um, you've had the Gavix for how long now again? Uh, two months, maybe? Um, so we'll, we'll do our typical thing. We're going to measure it out for you. Uh, we have calipers now. Yes, Lee K. We have calipers. <laughs> Um, and we're going to just measure this live for you here on the show. This limit of 500 models. Super limited. Not Omega limited. This is real limited. Yeah, edition. you know, like the 2,500 whatever models you might get. 7,386. No, this is true limited. So guys, uh, this Gavik Squadron it has a lug-to-lug -lug height. Pretty long. 
Oh, wow, yeah, 51, almost like yeah. 51 and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a case thickness, not to include the strap, of about 12 millimeters. That's actually really thin. Yeah, 12 it is a quartz is movement, so yeah, they, they get to make it a little bit thinner because of that. And the, the bezels, just so you know, guys, is the same width as the case, and that measures exactly 42. 42. So yeah, you have a 42 millimeter width case. Um, really good sizing all in all, especially with how feature rich this is. It's hard to add that many features to a dial without making it very, very hard to read. Um, but yeah. what, you have an alarm in here, you have a chronograph. Yeah, there's it's... an alarm there on the bottom. I've never used the alarm. Um, I don't think we're going to show you guys how to use the alarm now either. It's a basic uh, Ronda movement, so... Okay. Um, but does it chime, like, on the hour? Yeah. Okay. Actually, hold, hold the uh, bottom pusher down real quick. Let it go. Press it. Once. Just... I don't know. Are we... Hold on. Wait, let's do it again. Okay, so hold it. Just press it. No, just press it. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Why isn't it working, though? It should work. No, 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 no. Is it... Did it we... should beep, though. Take this out of the video. Here. Yeah. We want to sample the alarm for you. Was that it? That was it. Wow, okay, we we, we, were, we took a second to try to figure out how the alarm works on this watch. Adam earnestly had never really used the alarm. Um, There's actually an instructional. Um, the uh, the owner of Gavix has a little YouTube video and he explains how to use all of the functions oh, this on this particular watch. watch. Oh, that's yeah. so dope. So if you just type in Gavix Squadron, um, you'll see a couple of really great instructional videos um, as so to how to how to use the alarm and how to reset the... What's the water resistance the, on this, by the way? Uh, 100 meters. 10 oh, okay. ATM. Cool, so you can go swimming with this, you can shower with this. Yeah, it's got a screw down crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It really is the epitome of a tool watch. A quartz based chronograph with a diving bezel and a screw down crown. Wow, the action on that, uh, on the threading there is it's really pretty great. Nice, right? You know, you wouldn't really expect that, from, especially from a brand I've never heard of. I, I kind of yeah. reserve my opinions uh, until I have it in hand, but this is actually a really nice refined crown. The action there is really great. Certainly better mm -hmm. than a lot of Seiko's I've received within the same price range. Sign crown, pretty nice with the yeah. big old G. Nice pushers. Again, it's quartz, so there's not that much um, a feedback when you push these. Right. But there's just a little bit of a snap when you touch it. But also, you'll notice that because it is quartz, this, the, um, the counter ticks. Uh, and that's fine, uh, so long as it records time accurately. And of course, you have the accuracy of a quartz, so that's always good. This is definitely the epitome of a tool watch. You have those beautiful syringe hands, again, very military very inspired. Cool. Yep. Um, I love the Arabic numerals, like the font choice is very simplistic, very easy to read. And again, the easier to read when it comes to a watch with this much in regards to instruments, uh, the better. And you, you might not have noticed, but right directly at the four o'clock, you have a little date window down there. Uh, so they sort of inverted the colors so you can read it a little bit easier. Again. Very, very much welcomed. And I gotta say, um, I love the overall sizing and the look of this watch. Black is a great color to go with. I mean, it's just, it's simple. It's very simple, very easy. Um, I say simple. I mean, with this many registers and this many functions, it's it's anything but simple. Yeah. But uh, somehow they managed to pull it all together and make it seem refined. And particularly when you have like three registers, there's sort of two setups you can go with. And I'll sort of illustrate that on my Raymond Weil here. It, I, I find that it's, I hardly ever find watches that sort of master this subdial arrangement well, but when you have this layout here that's very similar to like a Speedmaster, and I mean like the original Moon watch, it's just very aesthetically pleasing, it's very symmetrical. Uh, so yeah, again, it's just it's just a good looking watch. I don't have much else yeah, to say about there's it. there's really not much to say about it. I mean, it is, like I said, it's a very purpose-built built tool watch. It was literally given to the Belgian Air Force. Yeah. Pilots are wearing this watch, you know, as we speak probably, somewhere yeah. flying over Russia, or no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where. But <laughs> those alarms. Uh, one of the really cool things too is the spring bars aren't typical just push pin push pin spring bars. Mm. Um, they're actually screw. Well, so they use like a flat head screw, and yeah. Nice. So um, which is pretty cool, and so, they're pretty thick too. So okay, so it's not you're not gonna quickly remove the strap, but the good bit of news there. So again, with a lot of um, military watches, I don't know if you guys have ever owned a vintage military watch, either like a Hamilton or a CWC, those spring bars are fixed, and you'll typically wear an old-style military watch 
on a NATO, right? Because those fixed spring bars. So it's nice that they offer you the ability to go between this metal bracelet and a NATO yeah. with something like that. And that's certainly more resilient or sturdier than a spring bar would be. So again, For it falls sure. in line with that military aesthetic you guys can and charm. See how thick those spring bars actually They're are. Stupid thick. Yeah. Very much a military watch. And it, it's nice. I mean, that strap you're wearing is pretty thin, uh, but I noticed that there aren't any sort of cutouts for the spring bar uh, to when it, where it meets the case. It's very very much like a Rolex would be. Do you know yeah, what I mean? absolutely. Or it's just like the case. Yep, the case. There's no cutouts. Case yeah. meets spring bar. Um, but why don't we talk about this bracelet really quick? It seems like the links, do you know if that center link is hollow or is it solid all the way uh, through? That I don't know about. Well, the, the truth of the matter is it has a lot of weight. And that it is pretty hefty. All the links are there. Um, the one thing I, I will say is the clasp is pretty basic. It looks like your typical diver clasp, and you can probably find examples of this all over eBay and Amazon. Yeah. Um, however, uh, you know, it, the bracelet itself is nice, but I find a lot of companies generally skimp on the clasp, and this is just like yeah. it's a stamped clasp. <laughs> a little bit of a skimp as well, but... Yeah, that's okay. It, it is stainless steel. I think it's 360 now stainless steel. Yeah, it is. As, as it should be, which just means it's a little bit more corrosion resistant I believe I forget like if you get 304 or 308 which is the other grade of steel that's commonly I've only ever seen it I only ever see people use 316 but maybe you're right I guess if you don't list it it's not 316 <laughs> yeah just be wary of that they, the, there are troubles with other grades of steel 316 is sort of like the the bottom line when it comes to uh, stainless steel yeah and it should be for you at least Oh, but yeah, this, this, the bracelet's great I mean it's very of course it, you can sort of where the inspiration is pulled off of these are oyster links um, it's a good-looking aesthetic, pretty timeless, and I kind of want to see just a general idea of what it might look like on that strap. It's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. Yeah, the brushing follows suit really well with those end links. Yep. Looks fantastic. All right, guys, yeah, this is a little bit of a short review. Like, we haven't spent too much time with it. I know Adam's had it for a bit, but he hasn't had it on the wrist too, too often. We're cycling through yeah. so many watches these days. But uh, it's a really interesting limited edition piece. I had no idea it was limited edition. Yeah. But the case itself is like, I love that case back. I don't know, it's, it's just, it's very, very refined for what it is. It is. So, I mean, this is this is definitely for someone who, so by the way, this retails for right around $400, guys, if you were to order this from Gavix's website. Um, and I don't even know, these might actually be sold out because I know when I bought this one, it was one of the, one of the, like, the last, last ones available because it's a limited stock on the of website. The, uh, the stainless steel, the of PVD the stainless steel. Of the stainless steel, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there is a very cool uh, PVD version as well. But yeah, so 400 bucks, I mean, this is obviously, like we said, the definition of a tool watch. Something that maybe if you're looking for in the market for, you know, some type watch. of military inspired, a Hamilton, maybe a Seiko, maybe even like a Seiko Tuna or something like that. You just want something very utilitarian to the point, um, but are looking for something a little bit different off the beaten path, something limited. Yeah. Uh, this is a really, really great option. Impress and obviously. Friends. Gavix. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? Check out my Gavix. What is that? So, yeah, I mean, obviously, this you're going to have to enjoy these aesthetic cues with the rotating bezel coupled with the chronograph with the really busy dial and everything, right? But if this is something that's right up your alley, mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say give it a shot. Maybe give this exact one a shot because I'll probably be posting this for sale um, at some point just because I need to cycle through and experience yeah. as many watches as humanly possible. Well, but... you, you know how we do it here, guys. I mean, a lot of the watches we talk about we actually own. I mean, I, sort of my philosophy here for the channel, at least from, from the get-go, we don't really want to put up pictures and just tell you our thoughts on pieces. We yeah. kind of want to experience them. So right. the Gavix was an interesting model for us to pull in. Uh, yeah. It's inter it, you know, it's, the bezel action isn't my favorite. It feels like it would be bi-directional. But it's, it's, it's loose, it feels tinny, but it lands right on the nose. It I actually really like the bezel action, believe it or not. Yeah, it's 120 click, right? Uh-huh, yep, 120. Okay, okay. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I, love, I love minute markings on... Okay, what am I trying to say here? When it's graded like this Fully all graded, the way around yeah. with like 5, 10, those increments, it's fantastic. For me at least, because if it's not on the dial anywhere, it allows you to tell the time if this is lined up perfectly uh, almost immediately, you know, it's 4.13 right now. And, and you can tell that in an instance when you have a, um, a bezel like this. I, I, yeah. I, li I love these bezel inserts. Uh, but, you know, your typical one will just have, um, let me see if I have a watch on me. I like it when it's in increments of 5 as opposed to 10. It's just so much preferable. Um, it's just easier to read the time, so that's there too. It's, it's easy. It's a really fun watch. Maybe yeah. I'll buy it. 
It really is. It's a really cool military inspired watch. I'll give you the properly wound discount. Stop. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, this is not a sales. <laughs> it's not a sales pitch. This is not one of those videos. I promise one of our, our commenters that <laughs> none of these lined really? up in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Just, this happens to be, I'm, Adam brought it in today and he's like, I, I, you know, I spent way too much. I'm going to start moving some things. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. He sold the Marine Master again. Shh. Let me just say no, that really don't quick. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you it's like all this for video, you guys. if you like this video, you, you clearly love Belgian things. Yeah. Be it waffles or Gavixes. <laughs> or that's it. <laughs> that's all I could think. Is that bad? <laughs> Belgium's got chocolate. Belgium's got a oh, bunch yeah, of great there you things. Go. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. If you like Belgian things, you, could, Beer? you, should, you should like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the most important thing. Duh. Um, feel free to hit that like button. Uh, if you dislike Belgian things, like waffles or beer or Gavix, you can hit that dislike button. No, just keep your thoughts to yourself, actually. <laughs> we might lose a little respect for you. Um, guys, as always, comment in the comment section down below. We'd love to start conversations with you. If you know more about Gavix than we do, express that knowledge. Share it here on the channel. I, I love the commentary we start as a group. I mean, there's been some really great comments on that recent Squally oh, video yeah. we released. Um, it's interesting that a, a lot of, I don't know, it's just great to talk about rumors and sort of opinions with you guys. Because Absolutely. I feel like the, the, the fans we have really care about horology, and I'm seeing that more and more. So yep. it's, it's wonderful when you guys share your opinions here. Yeah, also, you can share you your opinions with us on Facebook. We're on Facebook now over at... Um, yeah, Probably, Probably Wild. Like the page and join the Facebook group. Follow us on Instagram and check out PropertyWound.com for uh, blogs. We have like two or three blogs a week. Uh, there's a shop too. Sometimes we have a couple pieces in there that yeah. you might, that might catch your eye. Um, yeah. So that's about it. And subscribe if you haven't yes. yet. If you subscribe. haven't yet, if there are more views on this video than subscribers, how dare <laughs> enjoying this content the way you are? Um, no, please, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, we love to build this community uh, even further with your guys' support. So. That helps us the most. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us on this uh, this wonderful, wonderful uh, watch day. Watch Super Wednesday. hot New York City day. Oh my gosh, it's melting. It was raining earlier and perfectly cool, and now I'm melting yeah, in this house. It's just... Anyways, thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. See you guys.